Hello and welcome. So I'm just going to give it just the customary like 20 seconds before I kick in here. Okay, welcome. Hello everyone, I'm Susie Roy, the Customer Relations Manager for the Americas and Research Engagement Lead here at SNOMED International. I'm very excited to welcome you all to the SNOMED CT research webinar where we showcase research on or with SNOMED CT. This webinar is part of the SNOMED CT web series. Parallel to this, we have a highly successful clinical webinar series that you may also want to check out at some point. Just a couple of housekeeping items before we begin. You'll notice that everyone is currently muted. If you have any questions as we go along, please go ahead and enter your questions into the Q&A box. And when we get to the Q&A portion, I'll be sure to call on you first. This webinar is being recorded and later this week, I'll send everyone who registered a link to the recording as well as information about our next research webinar. I wanted to also encourage you to go ahead and save the date for Wednesday, July 15th, which will be our next research webinar. Dr. Ronald Cornett of the University of Amsterdam Medical Center will be presenting. Dr. Cornett is no stranger to the SNOMED CT community. And um, actually he and I presented on SNOMED and OWL last year at the Malaysia SNOMED Expo. And while I'm not actually sure what he's presenting next month, I'm sure it'll be exciting new work. So please stay tuned. Which also brings me to my next item. To stay informed, you can either watch the SNOMED web series webpage, or you can sign up for our research reference group. Uh, and that's where I post information about these and upcoming research related news. To join, you just have to email me, Susie Roy, sro at snomed.org, and I will get you on that list. And one last little bit of information before I hand this over to our presenter for the day. I wanted to do a plug for our annual SNOMED Expo. While there are Thankfully, um, some signs uh, regarding the uh, better management of COVID-19 situation globally. Um, it is still apparent that travel restrictions will remain for much of our SNOMED CT community. So we've actually made the decision to go ahead and make the SNOMED business meeting and expo in October a virtual event. Uh, more information regarding the registration and programming will be forthcoming, but just keep these dates for the expo in your calendars, October 8th and 9th. And I hope to let you know more about the expo in the upcoming months. So enough of my speaking because I know you guys have actually all come here today to listen to our presenter, Dr. Juan No. I had the absolute honor in introducing Dr. Juan No, a research scientist at Cicero, C-S-I-R-O. I'm sorry, I always kill that and I see a number of our colleagues from uh, CISPRO and the call and they're going to make fun of me later. Anyways, Dr. No, uh, he completed his PhD work at the University of Montpelier Science and Technology in France. His current research focuses on health informatics with an emphasis on natural language processing and pattern recognition and data mining. Today, Dr. No will present, can Wikipedia and NLP be used to derive an open clinical terminology? And with that, I will hand the screen over to you, Dr. No. Hello, everybody. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> uh, I'm, wow, well, yes. Uh, I am a research scientist. Uh, from the Australia eHealth Research Center, CSIRO. Um, I'm working in the health informatics research group. Uh, our group develops and applies innovative tools such as the machine learning, natural language processing, formal logic, statistical, and simulation approaches to improve health outcomes and to unleash the value in health data. Uh, our group uh, consists of five teams, namely uh, the health data interoperability, uh, this team focuses on uh, standard clinical terminologies and information model for exchanging information between the health system. Uh, next are the, the health text analytic team. 
we focus on text retrieval and analytic technique for unlocking the values from the unstructured electronic health record. And uh, the clinical terminology team focuses on improving clinical data quality and effectively dealing with the patient information spread across the healthcare system in Australia. And finally, the health data engineering and file team focuses on the use of healthcare technology to build and integrate digital health systems. So uh, as a member in the health data interoperability team, my research mainly focused on uh, semantic technology, uh, ontologies, terminology matching, standard biomedical terminologies in five contexts, natural language processing and deep learning for health tech data. Um, today, uh, I'm going to present my research work on open clinical terminology and its connection to Wikipedia and NLP. And uh, here is the outline. Uh, firstly, I make a short introduction to clinical terminologies. I will point out some issue in the current clinical terminology system. And then uh, I will present a statistical work investigating how well Wikipedia can be used as an open clinical terminology. In addition, uh, I will highlight common patterns of clinical terms found in existing clinical terminology system. Finally, I will present my approach uh, applying NLP and deep learning to decompose clinical terms from matching a free text to a post coordinated uh, coordination expression in Sonoma City. So let's start with the introduction to clinical terminology. Um, perhaps many of us have heard about electronic health records and have seen a lot of special code in the doctor note, but we're still unsure about uh, what the main role, the, uh, the role in healthcare domain. Uh, are they only used for efficient digital storage or they can use instead of the paper five? So uh, what do the clinical code means? And is there only one clinical terminology system or maybe many of them? So uh, let me start by introducing an example. In this example, uh, an old woman has chest pain and difficult breathing. So her family call emergency and bring her to the hospital. Uh, in the hospital, her family member cannot provide a detailed patient health condition to the doctor. So the hospital contact to the patient family clinic where she used to visit and request them to send uh, the patient phone health records. Now, uh, assume that the content of the electronic health record can be understandable by computer system. And how does a computer system work here? Uh, from the health record, it says that uh, the patient has history of heart disease. And last time visiting the GP, she had back pain and shoulder pain. So the GP prescribed uh, a medicine namely ibuprofen to alleviate the pain. According to the knowledge graph, the following fact can be inferred. Uh, firstly, uh, ibuprofen is a kind of painkiller drug, which is widely used for the pain relief. And from the graph, we know that back pain and shoulder pain is a kind of the subclass of pain. So ibuprofen can work in this case. However, um, the adverse if effect of the painkiller drug is to increase the risk of having heart disease and stroke. And from the health record, we know that the patient has history of congestive heart failure and myocardial infection, which is subclass of the heart disease. Therefore, the ibuprofen strengthen heart attack, which cause chest pain and shortness of breathing. So this is a very simple example. And in the emergency case, the computer S system can quickly find out the main reason from the long list of history health records, which save a lot of time and effort in uh, diagnosing the symptom. 
So this example showed a great benefit of using standard clinical terminologies in computer-based decision-making system. So what is the clinical terminology system? So in fact, uh, clinical terminologies are structured vocabularies covering complex concepts such as disease, operations, treatment, and medicine. Each term is uh, represented by a set of the logic statement that computer system can understand it. And each term also has unique code and text label for human reading. Uh, clinical terminologies plays a crucial role in health interoperability, in which is the common language that uh, can be used and understood by various healthcare agencies, such as the physician, laboratories, hospital, uh, general practice, and pharmacies. For example, a doctor can read a lab report, then he can write a prescription for a specific type of disease, and then patient can buy medicine from the pharmacy. However, uh, despite years of work, no reused clinical terminologies had yet been demonstrated in widespread use. So let's see some of the issue of current clinical terminology system. Now we come back to the previous example. Now the family clinic is ready to send patient health records to the hospital. There might be two forms of the patient health record. It could be a structure or it could be a simple unstructured discharge summary. The later form can be understood by doctor, but it's very difficult for a computer system to capture the clinical content and maybe it doesn't know what happened. The former can be processed by the computer system, but what if the family clinic and the hospital using different clinical code system? In this case, they don't understand each other. This is the main issue in the healthcare interoperability and we call it standardization problem. Uh, now we look further at the content of the electronic health record. In this health record, it states that uh, they use ICD-10 coding system to normalize clinical terms. It's quite popular as ICD codes are widely used to indicate a diagnosis for reimbursement purpose. Let's check for the code I50.9. And from the ICD-10 webpage, we can find is the health heart failure unspecified. It's also applicable for a wide range of heart disease, including congestive heart disease. What does it mean? There are no explanation here, no description. So in order to understand what the meaning of this term, people maybe look something, some other resource and Wikipedia can have. And Wikipedia can explain quite detail about what does the term is. Similarly, it happening to the uh, code i 21 code for occasional MI. This is another challenge in clinical terminology, which is uh, the lack of clinical term to provide precisely disease, as well as the light of term explanation. Uh, quality assurance is another concern in developing large scale clinical terminology system. Uh, Dr. Alan Rector in his study has pointed out that there are inconsistency between the lexical representation and logical definition in clinical terms. So let's take an example with chronic uh, myeloid leukemia. This term starts with the word chronic, which related to the clinical attribute associated morphology on the valued chronic myeloid leukemia category. This term is the subclass of chronic leukemia, but it's not a descendant of the chronic disease. On the other hand, we can find this term from Wikipedia, and it says that approximately 85% of patients with this kind of disease are in the chronic phase at the time of diagnosis. So the differences between internal logical definition and 
external research refer lead to a problem of quality assurance of the clinical terminology system. Uh, in relation to the previous issue, the content of the clinical terminologies are dynamically changed due to the requirement of users. The change may be applied for adding new or deactivating concept, property, and relation. Uh, maintaining and updating large scale clinical therapy system usually take a lot of time and labor effort, especially uh, most of them not open. So any update on the terminologies will be processed by a group of domain experts. And so fully revision may take a year to complete. So after analyzing the usefulness uh, as well as the some development issue of the clinical terminology system, we agree that the open clinical terminology should meet four requirements such as uh, first, about distribution, distributed collaboration authoring. This means the content are open, thus many contributors can add, edit new content based on the majority of agreement. Standardization means the term and their alignment are widely adopted by various healthcare agencies. Comprehension means every term must have a detailed description with appropriate reliable references. And finally, semantic and knowledge graph, which means those terms are organized as a node and edge in the common knowledge graph, thus can be used for reasoning. So we, uh, we know that building a new clinical terminology system from scratch is uh, definitely not a good choice. Instead, uh, improving the content of the existing system to meet requirement of open clinical terminologies is more reasonable. In this session, uh, we are going to study this possibility by looking at the combination of Wikipedia and Snowmass City. So why we chose Wikipedia? Our hypothesis is that uh, Wikipedia can be used to derive content of open clinical terminology. And there's some evidence supporting to our hypothesis. Um, first, uh, Wikipedia content are contributed by a huge number of contributors. Uh, next. Its content are also reliable thanks to high agreement from experts worldwide. And obviously, all terms in the Wikipedia have very detailed description accompanying with the relevant references. And current, uh, currently, Wikipedia contain more than 30,000 articles related to the medical and pharmacology domain. On the other hand, uh, Wikipedia is indeed a knowledge graph in terms of adding more semantic information. A semantic media wiki extension has been developed for this purpose. Now, the main question is that how well does the Wikipedia cover an existing clinical terminology like Snowmass City? Uh, in order to answer to this question, we have conducted statistical experiments and estimate how many percentage that Wikipedia covers Nomad City concept. And here is how the workflows of our experiment. First, we do in a search index for the whole English Wikipedia from the dump data. Then for an input clinical term, the search query to the Wikipedia will return a list of top ranking pages. Then we run our matching algorithm based on the labels and context to shortlist the potential matching candidate. And finally, uh, terminologies will assess those candidates and return the final result. Uh, in order to prepare the experiment, we have collected 12,000 annotated synonymous concept from the real patient health records in Brisbane Hospital. We also invite two experts in clinical terminologies to find mapping 
between Slumet concept and Wikipedia article. In particular, we specify four types of matching relationship such as uh, exact match, where Slumet concept is exactly described by a Wikipedia article. More specific, where the intent meaning of the Slumet concept is more specific than the content provided in the Wikipedia <coughs> article. And similarly, we also introduce more general and not found relationship. Uh, obviously, this semi-automatic uh, matching process is very time consuming and much of labor effort. So it's hard for our bot expert to work with 12,000 concepts. So we apply a popular statistical method to estimate the coverage value on the subset, subsample from the whole data set. First of all, we need to measure the inter-agreement between the two clinical terminologies in this task. Uh, indeed, uh, a good agreement suggests that the data is trustworthy and the experiment is reproducible. So that's different terminologies will assign the same value to the same piece of data. Here, well, we randomly select first 100 SNOMED concepts and apply Krippendorf alpha agreement. The region shows that the two experts achieve about 90% of agreement. According to the formula proposed by Dr. Israel Glenn, the evaluation is required at least 373 SNOMED concept to uh, have, say, 95% of confidence within the 5% of margins of error. In the next experiment, we randomly 400 new concepts and asked two experts working on them. The final results show that with 95% of confidence, Wikipedia can cover about 46 plus minus 5% of SNOMED concept. However, uh, for further analysis, show that many SNOMED concepts are in form of coordinator expression, which means it was described by a combination of several other SNOMED concepts. For example, uh, chron chronic rheumatic fever is a type of rheumatic fever with additional property like clinical cost on the value chronic. Searching those components on the Wikipedia, we also find the corresponding article. So this pattern led us to do the next experiment on composite matching. Um, the, the ideas of composite matching is coming from the common pattern in creating DZ name which was studied by Robert Lehman and his college. Uh, a particular flexible way to create DZ name is to combine a DZ category with a short descriptive modifier. So in this study, the author categorized the pattern in eight modified types, such as anatomical location, symptom, treatment, causative agent, biomolecular etiology, heredity, eponym and modifier frequently used to provide description. So further analyzing for, analyzing for the matching reason from the previous experiment, we have found the following pattern in our result. Uh, we have found anatomical location plus disease category. In this example, finger ulcer was not found to equivalent much to any Wikipedia article. Instead, it was found more specific than also article. So by adding anatomical location fingers, the combination describes the meaning of term finger ulcer. Similarly, for the pattern causal chip Asian plus DZ category, the term features uh, hemorrhage due to diabetes mellitus can be described by the combination of features hemorrhage and diabetes. And we also find composite matching for the symptom plus DZ category. Here, example, uh, we have bite uh, peri peritonitis can be described by a combination of bite symptom for the peri 
peritonitis disease. And here's another example for the treatment plus disease category. Uh, we have uh, two another pattern, nearly for modifier plus disease category, and one more for the modifier plus anatomical location and disease category. So to sum up, the experiment, experiment showed that there was about 160 nomads from uh, 400 selected can be described as a combination of several Wikipedia articles in terms of both exact matching and composite matching. We found that Wikipedia can cover nearly 80% nomad concept. In in order to find the reason of the coverage gap between the Wikipedia and SNOMED city, we noticed that the more common concepts are more likely to have an article in Wikipedia. So this table proves our statement. Indeed, uh, due to Wikipedia, is contributed by many contributors. So there's high chance that a popular term will be added to the wiki content. On the other hand, we also noticed that different granularity is the main cause of coverage gap between Wikipedia and SNOMED City. So let's see an example here. In SNOMED, uh, laceration is a child class of wound. But uh, in Wikipedia, we find that both laceration and wound are referring to the same wiki page. So for the first conclusion, we uh, had our statistical experiment show that with 95% of confidence, the coverage of clinical relevant subset of synomacity is high. Particularly, Wikipedia cover 46.3 plus minus 5% of concepts uh, from synomacity. And Wikipedia can describe 79% of synomac disease concept through both exercise and composite matching. So Wikipedia, is a good candidate to automatically derive new content for SNOMED City. And it can also be used to implement quality assurance for the clinical terminal system. Uh, a lesson from the previous experiment showed that the clinical term can be described by a combination of clinical attributes and existing term. The decomposition process seems quite obvious for terminologists, but the question is, can the computers automatically generate a semantic expression like SNOMED post-coordinated correlation expression for a new label? So to answer to this question, we have been doing a research on semantically SNOMED-based clinical label decomposition. So, in fact, uh, no single terminology has a depth and breadth to represent the broad spectrum of medical knowledge. Thus, the core group of well-integrated, non-redundant clinical terminologies will be needed to serve as the backbone of clinical information system. So let's see an example here. Uh, is the current SNOMED City version March to 2020, we can find a list of clinical terms related to the insect bite on different anatomical locations, such as head, cheek, nose, eyelid, mouth. But the term insect bite neck does not exist in this version, neither in previous version. So however, this term was noted in a real patient discharge summary. So how can the computer understand the meaning of this unindexed term? Uh, let's look at a similar term and find out how those terms were described in the SNOMED city. Uh, it seems that those terms label can be broken down into meaningful chunks. For example, uh, insect bite of head can split into two segments, insect bite and head. The first segment, insects by, imply that this kind of disease uh, 
due to an event, namely by an insect. And the second segment head shows the anatomical location on the patient body where the event happened. And finally, insects might even uh, represent a, an associated morphology to superficial by wound type. This uh, decomposition process are the same for insects by a finger term. So learning those patterns from existing clinical terms, we can answer for the question, can computer generate a definition for new clinical terms? Indeed, uh, similar to the previous decomposition process, for the new label like insects by neck, we can expect the following result. Uh, the first segment, insects by, as uh, shown in the previous exam, will be understood as some kind of disease due to uh, a by insect event and has associated morphology with superficial by wound disease. The second part, neck, implies that the disease was found at skin of neck. So it's possible to uh, expect the computer produce a list of the clinical attribute values like this. And we call this problem uh, label decomposition and attributes value description. Uh, to solve this problem, we use uh, natural language processing and machine learning uh, technique. Uh, in our approach, uh, supervised learning methods have been used to predict clinical attributes for the given input terms. The ideas of supervised learning is that we uh, develop an algorithm to train the computer from the training data to that it can able to predict the right label for the incoming data. Here, uh, we generate training data by processing labels, <coughs> statement expression, expression and uh, uh, of every term in the SNOMED city. <coughs> uh, the machine learning model used in this text we call it the multi-label classification with attention. So let's see an example of training data was generated from the SNOMED city. Uh, let's take example with the insects by a head. Uh, this term provides a sequence of four token shows in the column title. You see the insect by up and head. So each sequence like that, we call an input instance. Uh, from the description of the term is nomicity, we know that uh, insects by a head had three <coughs> clinical attributes, namely associate morphology due to and finding size. And corresponding to those attributes, we have value like skin structure of head, which is, has the semantic tag as body structure by a insect has semantic tag event and superficial bias wound has semantic tag as morphologist abnormality. So we have the input here is a, a sequence of four tokens, insect by a head. And we had a list of the output labels, namely body structure, event, morphologist abnormality, associate morphology, due to and fighting side. Uh, the ideas of the attention here is to highlight the importance of each token with the respect to the each output label. After the training completion for each given input, we can see the attention magic between the input token and output label. The intuition here is that each word in the clinical term will bring some special meaning contributing to the whole meaning of the term. So in this example, what head uh, has more attentive weight on semantic tag body structure and on clinical attribute uh, finding side. What bite has higher attentive weight on semantic group event and attribute due to. Uh, more specifically, we have designed a deep learning model called multi-label by long short memory attention classification. 
uh, how it works. Uh, firstly, for each token from the input text E1, E2, uh, we do the vectorize by a pre-chain word embedding layer. The word embedding is chained by the Google word to, uh, word to vec on the uh, lack resource in biomedical uh, text. Next, uh, the sequence of embedding vector will be sent as input to the bidirectional long short memory for capturing the meaning of every tokens within the context of terms level. And then the attention layer will assign uh, attention weight to each encoded embedding and combine all of them to classify the correct labels. Uh, here, after, training the, after the training process is completed, we use the training model to predict clinical attribute for any new clinical term. So, uh, go back to previous example where input is take insect by neck. On the top table, the blue row uh, show the classified semantic tag for input text. In this example, insects by neck is classified as a uh, disorder. Uh, additionally, the yellow cell highlight the semantic tag for each token in the label. Here, token by is classified to the semantic tag event, whereas the token neck is classified into semantic tag body structure. Similarly, on the bottom table, so the top ranking clinical attribute that the input label may have. Here, uh, the most potential clinical attributes are associated morphology due to associated with finding side. So now we assume that uh, the machine learning model can predict the potential clinical attribute for a given, a given input text. How can the computer know what are the values for those predicted attributes? Uh, in order to solve this problem, we again build another machine learning model to perform statement inference. Here, a statement is a chipo with head relation and tail. We already know head and relation according to the previous uh, prediction model. And now we, we need to find tail. Uh, the objective of the machine learning model here is to find a function f and vector space v to approximate the equation f of uh, vector of head, vector of relation equal to vector of tail. Uh, the idea is to transform every text label into a knowledge graph embedding vector space. So let's see an example illustrated the training phase and inference phase. In the training phase, computer algorithm learn to uh, the vector space model for uh, vector embedding of insect by a head plus insect by a uh, finding side equal to vector embedding of uh, skin structure of head. So in the inference phase, we can expect that the vector embedding of insect by neck plus vector embedding of finding side will be a vector that closely to the vector embedding of skin structure of, uh, skin structure of neck. Uh, here is the overview structure of the machine learning model. Uh, for each correct statement, uh, we call it positive chipo. We also generate some incorrect statement and we call it negative chipos. Uh, all text label in head, relation, and tail will be encoded into a vector embedding layer uh, before sending to the objective function. Here, different between the previous one, we have the label embedding, and previous one, we have the word embedding. Then the machine learning model will iteratively learn its parameter to maximize the distance between the value score computed on the correct statement versus the value score of the incorrect statement. 
which means uh, we highlight the score of the positive triple and uh, low score on negative triple. Once the training process completed, we use the uh, label embedding layers and objective function to find the potential value of clinical attributes of the uh, input term. Uh, there are some challenges uh, in the training knowledge graph embedding for clinical terminology system. Uh, the first one is about the cardinality of relation uh, due to uh, multiple inheritance in clinical terminology system. Uh, the is a relation can be one to n or n to one. Here, an example with the uh, term accused eczema. They have multiple parents and children. Uh, additionally, due to semantic inheritance, there will be many cases where a term inherited some clinical attributes value from its far distant ancestor. In this example, acute eczema uh, inherits attribute clinical cause on value sudden onset and or short duration from its grandparent accused disease term. Uh, for, uh, we have some result in this experiment. Uh, we have proposed a machine learning approach to semantically break a free text into meaningful chunk. And we break uh, clinical property for the short clinical text and generate nomad-based logic expression for the free text. The current approaches achieve 75% uh, accuracy on our training testing data for the first two tests. The third test uh, is still under evaluation with a different model for training. So we uh, do not uh, have the result right now. The wood result right now, not yet. Um, thank you. So it's all of my uh, talk today. Wow, that was absolutely excellent. Thank you so much. Thank so, you. Um, what I'd like to do now is open the floor up to any uh, questions. So we do have a Q&A box. Um, I believe you guys can access it via the bottom panel of the Zoom, or you can raise your hand. And I think I have the ability to unmute you. Yes, it looks like I do. So if anyone has a question, Please go ahead and raise your hand. Hua, I do have a question. Um, what, yes. what's, your, what's your next step? What, what are you working on next for your? Oh, I did see. I'm a, sorry. What's your next? What's your next step? Yeah, uh, I will continue the the last uh, uh, learning model with the statement inference. Because right now, I, I mentioned there's some challenges in uh, knowledge embedding model. Yep. And we have tried state-of-the-art model on that. But uh, there may be many reasons. Unfortunately, the reason around 50% or uh, nearly 60%. I'm not happy with that. And uh, I'm thinking about redesign the training data from the SNOMED for, for, the, problem, for the model and maybe integrate some uh, new technique uh, on the knowledge embedding uh, in, in experiment. Because the, the previous one, as I show here, uh, we run something uh, like that. Uh, it's very simple yeah. model for translating vector. And when you met the problem with the cardinality for multiple inheritance, uh, so yeah. the, the vector will be the same at some point. And that's not good. That's why it downgrades the accuracy. So we running some alternative approach and, um, you know, uh, training is quite take a long time and we <laughs> do both training data and uh, redesign the data and running experiment. So right now I'm not uh, have the good reason to show you at this time, but the idea is the same. We just change the model and training and mm -hmm. uh, changing the training data. Yep. Excellent. Um, so we do have a couple of other questions that have come in. So uh, Jim, Jim Steele, I see you have put in a question in the box. I'm going to allow you to talk. 
and that way you can ask your question. Uh, sure, thank you. Um, if I'm able to be heard, um, I was, the, my question is whether uh, this kind of approach could be used to continuously monitor changes to Wikipedia content in order to harvest potential content requests that could be, or content updates that could be um, introduced as candidates for updates to SNOMED. Uh, can, can you again? Yeah. I'm not understanding could, what is the yeah, question. Could you, could you have a system that monitored Wikipedia changes um, and, and use those changes to harvest potential update candidates for SNOMED? Uh, I think yes, because the uh, uh, first we need to re-indexing a lot of the Wikipedia dump every time and we find the difference between version and from the tsunami side also the difference and then we can see how they match um, together so I think it's potential yes thank you thank you um Liara I see you have a question I'm going to unmute you Hello. Hi, thank you for a great presentation. I just have a, one question. With regards to Wikipedia, it's a powerful source, but because it's an open source, um, the quality assurance is uh, always a question. Do you have any sort of suggestions for clinical assurance of the content um, that is being proposed uh, yeah. for incorporation? That, that is very interesting. Actually, our team also have some uh, work on the quality assurance for the snowmacity, and we try using external resource to validate it. Uh, as far as I know, Wikipedia is one of the most, uh, I, I mean, uh, most viewed or most searched information uh, when we click on the Google. And it's maintained uh, regularly and have many people look on it. So according to the majority agreement, I think that the, the quality of the Wikipedia is good. And it can be used as a, a reference to verify the, the quality assurance of the critical system. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I believe that Wikipedia is a good resource on it, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Lara, Liara, and um, let's see, um, Dion has a question, so I'm going to unmute him. Hi, Liara, can you hear, oh, Susie, sorry, can you hear me? <laughs> Either <Yeah>. one, <laughs> we both answer, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I think, thanks for the talk. That's, um, that, it was really, really interesting. It's fascinating, thank you. Um, I, I, do have, I did have a, a query about, um, whether this, whether the research that you've done so far was um, sort of focused to any particular hierarchies within SNOMED and, and, and particularly if you think these techniques, um, the, uh, the applicability of these may vary um, based on the, the different hierarchies of SNOMED, but both in terms of the Wikipedia matching, but also the, um, the uh, uh, expression generation. Uh, currently, we only work with the uh, uh, this or the disease subclass of the Sumat city, and we have uh, we tried because uh, we have some data from outside. We mentioned only about the uh, to to annotate it, the free text to that kind of the concept is the uh, the subclass of disease. So uh, my current research focus on the only hierarchy on the uh, supply of this order is the slow city. Okay, and do, and do you, you think that this would be sort of applicable across other hierarchies or, um, I mean, that obviously there'd be certain some, some hierarchies that would probably be more problematic, but there may be some particular uniform areas of content that might yeah, be I, particularly effective. I think the idea, uh, this, um, the idea can be applied for the other, but I haven't did any experiment on that, so uh, I, I cannot say anything now. But I believe sure. that the, the idea can be applicable for the other. Yeah. 
Cool, thank you. Thank you, Dion. Any additional questions for Dr. No while we have him? Any final thoughts, Dr. No? Okay, if not, I'm going to just pull this. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. And um, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us today for our SNOMED CT research uh, webinar. Dr. No, thank you so much for presenting today. That was excellent work and really looking forward to uh, your next steps as you progress your research. Um, if you're interested in uh, learning more or joining our research reference group, like I said, please email me. My email is on the screen. Um, if you are interested or you know uh, colleagues who are interested in presenting at a future research webinar or a clinical webinar, please uh, contact me or uh, info at snomed.org. Um, otherwise, um, I bid you all a thank you and I will see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.